Hey, travelers. We're back again. New uh, new digs. Where are we? Right? <laughs> I decided that I wanted a different place, and so, um, well, I guess my wife decided for me. Yeah. But we, we got booths, and we, we can display all the beer signs now, so isn't that nice? Not many people have a booth in their house, so that's that's pretty cool. Well, you, get a booth. you know. Call you land in booth. Yeah. It's yeah. nice It's nice to have a booth. Anyway, we're... Uh, Today on the vlog, we're going to talk about Belgian-style beers. I, I don't think, truly, to be honest with you, though, we have quite a few years of beer experience between the two of us. We're probably not truly qualified to talk about Belgian beers. No, we're going to... We're going um, to make a lot of people mad with this one. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I feel pretty confident talking about most beer styles, except for Belgian. And then today, we literally decided this today. We sent one text. What should we talking about? Like, I got Belgian beers in my fridge. And why not? Let's talk about Belgian. Yeah. Let's botch that one. You bet. I, I'm all right with it. Right? Yeah, I think. I mean, and, and since you brought all of these, the ones that I brought aren't up here. But um, I'll, I'll let you start with whatever one you want to start with. We're drinking Pitchfork because <laughs> you can pronounce that one. <laughs> the, yeah, the Pitchfork Double. We got it's a in, nice it's local. In the growler. Yep. I want to say local beer, but that probably doesn't mean anything to you if you're watching this somewhere else besides where we are currently. I'm gonna go off on just a just a little tangent here. Uh, for those people in the Twin Cities market, if you haven't gone over to Hudson yet, now I know some of you have gone over to Hop and Barrel, and and I hear they're they're really good, and and I'm I'm really happy about that. But there's a lot of you that probably haven't made it over to Pitchfork yet. Two more exits down. Yeah, two more exits down. Uh, you need to make it there and visit Mike and Mike, <laughs> not the ESPN Mike and Mike. Mike and Mike of Brewing. I didn't even know that was a show on ESPN. Well, that's because you don't know sports. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so, uh, so I go beer. go visit go visit them. Some of the finest beers you will ever try, and really really nice people. They and got Mike. Mike Mike is awesome. The other Mike don't care for him. I'll let you decide which one. <laughs> 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 but uh, you said this is a double. Yep, this is their double. Okay. Yep. I always feel bad it's calling it an Abbey, Abbey Double, Double. It's usually just a, a slightly more alcoholic, you know, or has a bit more <clears throat> higher ABV Belgian beer as opposed to a Wit or something like that, or sure. a Belgian Blonde. And typically they have like a Belgian sugar candy in it, and that Belgian sugar candy gives some nice, sweet, but yet dryish flavors to the beer. And it also pairs well nice with the yeast. The yeast in Belgian beer tip, typically makes a... It has like lemon and coriander and clove, clove yeah. and white pepper. That's always a it's always a descriptor is white pepper. But have you ever had white pepper? I've had white pepper, uh, but I, I'm more of a black pepper fan. So <laughs> I when I like you know when I want spice on something, yeah, I don't go. Oh, I'm just gonna put a little white pepper on. It. No, no, just give me the black pepper and I, let's spice it you up. Don't, you don't go to the store and see like oh yeah, there's white pepper. I'm gonna yeah. buy that. I don't, well, I don't think I've ever well, seen it. White pepper is the way that we. Um, we put pepper into things without our kids noticing that pepper's in it. Yeah. So, there you go. So, uh, yeah. Let's give this guy a sipper. Sweet, dry on, very dry on the finish. And it actually is a little peppery on the, believe it or not. Yeah. Not yeah. black peppery, white peppery. You know what? I'm going to be like... You decide what I'm that is. I'm going to go to the restaurant and be like, I want, I want none of that black pepper. <laughs> <laughs> I want the white pepper. <laughs> yeah. I already finished my glass. That's how good it was. Yeah, that's a that's a fun beer. I get that's yeah. very drinkable too. It's oh a, yeah. I don't know what the ABV on this might say in the tag. We don't research before they show people. I'm not gonna uh, pre look up the ABV. No, no, it doesn't. It's got alcohol. If you know, if you frequent uh pitchfork, go ahead and, and let us know what the ABV is in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. I suppose we should open another beer. Let's open another beer. How about that? Which one? Let's say you go with the White Lightning. Or do you want to go with the Finnegan's? Well, you know what? Finnegan's we can talk about a little bit. Finnegan's also... <clears throat> so, quick story about Finnegan's. They were a contract brew at Summit Brewing in the cities. And if you don't know, we love Summit here at Taproom Travelers quite a bit. Um, so, Finnegan's was a contract brew beer, brewery. And all of their profits go to feeding the hungry. So, it's a very noble brewery if you will and they have a re did you know about the reverse food truck reverse food truck they yeah. go get food from places that don't need it and they take it to people who do that's right 
Um, and they have a new place in the cities now. Um, I haven't been there yet. I don't. You haven't been there. Uh, they were a week or two from opening when I was in the cities last. So. I watched. I watched their Facebook live video of the opening. It looked very nice. They had a lot of dignitaries there and a lot of important people. And um, the outside and the inside both look very nice. So, um, very, very excited to go and see that one of these days. So. Yeah, and it's uh, it's across the street from my favorite city, a hotel in the cities, which makes me super happy. Yeah, okay, I'm going to stay at the Best Western Normandy. The Best Western Normandy. Maybe they'll sponsor us. The Best yeah, Western that's Normandy. That's a fantastic hotel. Wouldn't that be great? Um, so we'll we'll try the uh, Finnegan's. This is called. Um, this is the Freckled Rooster. The Freckled Rooster. The Beer Blanc. Beer de Blanc. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm just adding words into French things. Now, a beer de so, blanc is an interesting style. It's a style made with champagne yeast traditionally or some kind of wine yeast. So it should be, a, like, if you think of a champagne, uh, good champagne, not like the the, the weird stuff. It should be, has a nice, bu- high carbonation. Well, it's, a lot, it's got a lot of bubbles with it. High carbonation, yeah. tiny bubbles, and it should finish relatively dry. Okay. So It's got a, kind of a, a champagne nose on it. I actually can't smell anything. My baby stabbing in the nose with his finger before I came here. Oh, no, like, you'll have that. my nose. Yeah. So I got like, blood clots up there right now. Yeah. <sighs> it's got, it's very drinkable. Drinkable. It's effervescent. Hints of dried fruit. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice and, dry and finish. And it's got a nice, yeah, very nice dry finish. This is a beer that I can see not being overly popular, and it probably should be more popular than it is because people tend to like sweet things or like uh, hoppy. Overly hopped things. Dry yeah. is not necessarily yeah. the most sought after flavor in beer. Uh, but, you know, it's it's a style worth drinking. So, and it's also I, really I would unique. S- I would say if you want to expand your palate a little bit and get away from all the hops or just all the stouts or whatever, this, yeah. is, this is something to really change it up. I think what also makes this unique is that uh, for example, I went to the grocery store in town here, which has like a, a hundred and five beer doors. <clears throat> yeah. And this is probably the only beer to Blanc in the entire store. No kidding. So if you're out there and you want a beer that you haven't had yet, this might be one of those beers for you to go find. And if you're in the city's area, it's probably a relatively easy beer to come Pretty by. Pretty easy to find, I think. And you, it's a truly unique beer. So if you want to be like a real beer snoot at a party, yeah. bring this guy with you. And plus, you know... You drink beer, it helps people eat more food. Isn't that nice? You get to you get to drink beer and you get to help people. That I mean, you really can't go wrong with that. Apparently, That's, there's a dog barking in the background or something, <laughs> <laughs> or baby coughing. This is what happens when we do vlogs in our our uh, our homes' basements. Yeah, well, so. this is a basement. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm not good enough an actor not to. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, not, everyone's like, yeah, I'm not either. Everyone's watching this, going like, "Shut up, fat boy." We know. I think the last time that we did one of these, we probably lost subscribers, but we'll try to gain a few of them back. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we'll we'll pick one more, and then we can tell we can talk about the other ones, and then we have we have a little bit of um, news that we can talk about. So, out of out of whatever you think here, I like the foiled ones. Because they're pretty. Let's go with the darker one then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Or a fruit one. Trois. Trois pistols. I'm. I know. I'm saying that wrong. Landon. Landon. But Alex is trying to mime something. Yeah. Our our producer is. <sighs> what? The label. Oh, we will. I am. I'm trying to we read it. Will after we pick one. So this is from Unibrew or Unibrow, however you want to say it. I'm. I'm not French and I can't. So this is uh, trois. Pistoles? Pistoles? I don't really know. Um, what I do know is that I'm going to drink it. Yeah. Luna Brew is probably one of my favorite uh, Belgian breweries in the Americas because they are out of Canada. They're not a United States brewery. Oh. When it comes to probably mass produced Belgian beers in the, United, or the uh, North American continent, it'd have to be a, a dead heat between Una Brew and uh, Brewery Amagang. They're both doing phenomenal beers, all very good and worth drinking. I mean, there's also good local breweries. Like, you got in the cities, you got Boom Island, and um, you also have Lakes and Legends. Yeah. All doing great Belgian beers as well. But, you know. Well, and, comes- I, and I think Boom Island probably gets, uh, doesn't get noticed as much because it's kind of off. Yeah. By its, it's not necessarily by itself, but it is a smaller place. And, they, and they also don't make hazy IPAs. Right. They don't. Well, so. they do. They do make a Belgian IPA. I've seen that there before, but they do not make it a, a hazy IPA. Yeah. Yes, you're right. So, uh, 
Yeah, let's dive into this guy. Belgian style dark ale. A lot of fruit on the nose. That's one of my favorite part of Belgian beers as a whole is the like d- uh, dried fruit, dark fruit flavors, the plums, the fig, the it's kind of <clears> once again a flavor profile that's very easily overlooked in the beer cooler, but at the same time it's kind of a refreshing change of base. If nothing else, people should buy it just for the uh, the foil. That's nice. <laughs> nothing like classier than foil and beer. and the names that you can't pronounce. Mhm. Mhm. Mm-hmm. A lot of fruit on this one. Mhm. Nice dark fruit complexity. Oh, so good. Once again, a key a key mark of the Belgian beer is tight bubbles, refined little bubbles. Mm-hmm. Also, you know, what makes Belgian beer so unique is the yeast, like Belgian yeast. Right. You can make the same beer with a lager yeast or an ale yeast, and you would not get this beer. You have to use that Belgian yeast to get those bubbles, to get those like side flavors that the yeast contributes to the beer. That's so. what I really enjoyed about Kevin. Uh, we did a, an episode with uh, Boom Island over in Minneapolis, and when he was talking to us about brewing and some of the things that he can do with yeast, you know, some of the flavors that he gets out, you know, he, he'll be like, you know, you taste clove in that beer, right? Well, we didn't put any clove in it. It's all yeast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you taste this on that. Well, we didn't get- put any of that in there. You know, you taste, a- you know, anise or whatever. Orange peel. That's all. Yeah, it's all yeast. White pepper. Right. Yeah, white pepper. That is. That's all in. The we'll east. call this the white pepper episode. <laughs> I want that tattooed to my lower back. <laughs> the white pepper. Um, you know, so yeah, uh, Belgian beers. I will show you one more. The 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 complexity out of these beers is fantastic. Um, Le Fin du Monde. That's probably one of the actually, more popular I, I, ones. From... I used to know what that meant. It means the end or the world's end. I think. Oh, end of the world. Let's see what it's, it shows on the label. No, it doesn't. It's a triple, though. My wife speaks so, French. Yeah, I do not. So uh, she tells me these things, and I parrot it back. I speak a little bit of German. And several that's months it. later, and I can't remember the full thing. But uh, yeah, Belgian just, beers. Um, another, you know, when when you're listening to uh, you go and talk to a Belgian brewer, somebody who make Belgian beers, you come to the realization that Belgian the the Belgian beer culture is very different than say the German beer culture. It's kind of a fun comparison. Germany is very drinkable beers they meant they're meant to be drink high quant uh high like in high quantities yeah. high quantities of the beer yeah. they're very sessionable they're not necessarily overly complex in flavor but they're you know engineered to be exactly the same every time you drink it belgian beer is like for example in belgian some more traditional places won't let you have more than two beers sure because they say you can't appreciate the third beer uh enough right to uh, fully understand it, so you're kind of forced to. It's kind of this unique like culture where they they're not so focused on like consistency. They want each beer to, you know, they do a lot of open vat fermenting, and when you do that kind of stuff, you get different flavor profiles. They're just right. very each beer is its own special beer, and it's meant to be savored and and kind of fussed over. So it's a very unique beer culture, probably ar- arguably one of the best beer cultures in the world. Yeah, making some of the best beers in the world. And we can talk about the Trappist a little bit, yeah. the West Mala Trappist. So Trappist beers, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I most what I know will. about Trappist is that they only brew when they need money. <clears throat> nope, that's uh, West Vidland or whatever it's called is does that, but most Trappist breweries are run by monks. So, well, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So they're still controlled by uh, 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 the Trappist monks or a church Yep. Based monk. Yep. There's eight Trappist breweries in the world. Six are in Belgium. One's in the Netherlands, and one's in the United States in Boston. We're darn lucky to have one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Spencer is their flagship. Very good beer. I should have brought some back from Pittsburgh. God. Anyways, um, you know, and like, like I said, they're just this. And like we could do like a 20 hour episode on yeah. Belgian beer, and then still not be done. And you know, we're also not smart enough to talk about it for 20 hours. But there's we've yeah. done the best that we can with this episode. Insanely anyway, in depth. Uh, we're move on to news here. Uh, Green Flash has taken a Sherlock in. I just saw that today. Yeah, they. Um, I, I think they're done. Yeah. I mean, in in no terms, they're more or less for the rest of us. They're done. They the bank that had their loans said uh, you didn't follow through with it, so we're we're taking it all away from you. Green Flash is no more. And it's kind of a shame. I mean, I, to be fair, um, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about a few episodes ago. If you like a brewery, a bigger brewery, you need to buy beer from that bigger brewery. Right. <laughs> Otherwise, right. they're going to go away and you're going to be like, I, I want this beer now. That being said, I was never necessarily a Green Flash proponent. I never drank a ton of their beer. So it's not my fault, I guess, is my point. <laughs> uh, 
But it is like they are a titan. They were an IPA mega house. That was their thing. They did a ton of IPAs. They were very much on the forefront of the hot movement in the United States, you know, all those years ago. But what I see happened with them is they didn't innovate. They they got making one dimensional IPAs when when they first came out with them at the time was good enough. Like people right. were like minds were already right. blown enough. But now here we are, you know, 25 years, 30 years later. I don't know how, when they opened. Once again, we don't it, research. It, pro- it probably seems like 25 years, but I bet it probably was the, the early 2000s. They so probably, I, I, think, I, I think they just they just didn't really catch up with the times. Now now you're seeing a lot of hazy IPAs. You're seeing citrus. Yeah, a lot of different kinds of hops and things. And Green Flash just kind of kept doing what they were doing all along. <laughs> So they they when, might have been doing more experimental things closer to their home bases here in Wisconsin. We most certainly were not getting those. Right. So, and I, mean, I know they, they stopped distributing to a lot of, uh, towards the end here, they stopped distributing to a lot of different places and they were trying to, to hone in on their market. It just yeah. didn't work. They, they could never make up for the money that they'd spent. Yeah. And that's also, uh, you know, breweries at one point in time were growing very fast because there wasn't a whole lot of competition. But then the rest of the country caught up with them. Yeah. You're seeing yeah. larger breweries struggling now because there's uh, there's uh, just too much local competition that they can't go toe-to-toe with. And, you know, innovate or die, too. That's kind of the, the business. Uh, craft brewing is built on a business of we're not going to drink the same old boring shit all the time. Well, and you're seeing even, even some of the bigger ones now, at least locally to us, so Surly, Summit, um, even shells down in New Ulm, you're seeing them, you know, they were doing a lot of, and not to say that it was a bad thing, but they were doing a lot of the same thing for a long time and it was working. But when everybody else started doing all kinds of crazy stuff, yeah. they had, they had no other choice, but to do a little bit of that too. And so a little bit of barrel aging, a little bit of, um, you know, you know, different kinds of things. And so, you know, and like shells, they, they opened up star Keller, which is just a, a souring sour program uh, program. And they got, they have a whole place just dedicated to that summit, you know, mm-hmm. another great example of a brewery that does a lot of experimental stuff, tea infusion beers, so on and so forth. So, you know, and you know, if an IPA brewery, they didn't innovate in the IPA section, which is probably one of the hardest departments to constantly update in. Cause you have to, when black IPAs, we had citrus, we had doubles, we had briefly had white IPAs, yep. we had, uh, you know, now we're in hazy world, and like you gotta, who knows what's coming next? Yeah, I'm, you know, I, mar- I have no idea. Partially f- afraid and excited all at the same time. Yeah. So, so to so to sum this all up, if you like a brewery, frequent them, buy their beer, go to their place because they they make all of the money if you actually go to their place instead of, and not to say that distributors are bad, but you know. Well, and, but you have to buy the, the the beer from the liquor store, otherwise they lose shelf space. That too, it's a double edged sword. So, so I guess you damned know, if you do, damned if you don't. Do both. Just buy beer. That's that's just, really what we're just, saying. Even if you're not drinking it, just constantly buy beer. Yeah, always buy beer. Um, uh, anyway, uh, to wrap it up, if if you like what you see, comment below, like us, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the all the good stuff. We'll probably have a few pictures from tonight. Uh, some yep. of the beers that we've been drinking and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, and if you if you feel like we're dead wrong on our thoughts, think we're full of shit, tell us. I, I, I always love uh, uh, criticisms and critiques of my beer knowledge because I'm not perfect. We try. He especially likes them from different people because everybody knows that you get them from us <laughs> as, uh, as often I, as you can. I'm the smartest guy here, so. Uh, I'm sure you think you are. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, from all of us at Taproom Travelers... We will uh, we'll catch you next week or maybe the week after. We'll see how it goes. In the meantime, prost. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time. <laughs>